Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, welcome to day one of 30. Because it's May 8th, uh, we start our next yoga teacher training in Wisconsin on June 8th. So I figured it's actually 31 days, but we're just going to go 30 days because in that time, I'll, there'll be some prep work and whatnot. I'll give myself a day. So we're going to start today for um, a daily video countdown, teaching you different topics and, and helping guide you through some of the concepts of what you'll find in a yoga teacher training. So uh, today we have, I'm just getting started right away. So first of all, my name is Ashley and I'm a yoga teacher and I do yoga teacher trainings and I love teaching online and through video because it's a way that I'm able to connect with more people and and uh, meet people I maybe never would have met before. So I love this online uh, online area. Okay, I'm currently in Washington State, and I will be driving back to Tomo, Wisconsin for our Alley Cat Yoga Teacher training coming up. And we're gonna base our training off of the, tr the first training that I did, which was a power yoga style. And the very start, when we're getting started from the manual that I got, there's getting started. And then from my notebook, which is this notebook, by the way, my first yoga teacher training is absolute gold. I love it. It is, um, every time I open it up, I get new inspiration or revisit topics that I've, I've missed or forgotten and um, relearn again. Um, the, what helps you get better and better at anything is to practice, is to keep repeating what it is that you're wanting to get good at. Okay, today, like I said, we're getting started with breath. So take a moment, if you're sitting here watching with watching with me, uh, you can just take a moment and just acknowledge how your breathing is right now. Is it shallow? Is it into your belly? Is it sending to different areas of your body? Are you breathing through your nose? Just notice how your regular breath is. The style of breathing we went through and talked about, it comes from Tibetan style. It's called Dan Tien breath. T-A-N-T-I-E-N breath, Dan Tien. It's the same as prana or life force or your chi. It's your energy and how it works. So I'm going to read this little excerpt from my teacher training manual, getting started, because it's got great information. Okay, Dan Tien breath. In our yoga practice, breathing is the most important element we are trying to perfect. Now, the pose is the breath. It is believed that if you can control the breath, you can control the mind. In Sanskrit, this is called prana. It translates to life force. It's what's ne what feeds our body and makes our being conduits of energy. Our system is mainly steeped in Tibetan principles. We call our yoga breath dantian a Chinese term that translates to a sea of energy. The Dantian is located in the center of gravity, just below the navel, so that's where that area is located. In Tibetan, it's also known, known as Dumo, and it's basically a pool of energy. We will discuss the Dumo in length in our energy workshops, which we did in our training. The Tibetans also refer to breath as the wind horse. In meditation, we're trying to quiet the wind horse. They refer to the breath as wind and the thoughts as horses. Fitting, actually. Horses are extremely strong and powerful. Untrained, they're wild and can be very destructive and harmful. When trained, they're extremely effective. So when our breath is short, choppy, or quick, and our thoughts running wild like out-of-control horses, imagine that, that affects, imagine how that affects the effects on our body. So Dantian is a circular breath. So when you're breathing, um, this is through yoga, and uh, for a yoga practice, you may be familiar with ujjayi breath, so that heat constriction in the back of the throat as you breathe in and out. We're adding on a little bit more with a more circular pattern of breathing. So we take an inhale through the nose, imagine, and it travels down the back of the body, filling the lower part of the lungs, that Dantian right below the navel. And as you exhale, it comes out the front of your body and out through your nose. So it's a circle through the body, getting all situated, getting the oxygen all throughout the body. And even just imagining that is helpful when we're breathing in our yoga practice. 
So maybe it doesn't literally do that, but as we, as we think it literally does, uh, it becomes more of a, this like wave-like force throughout energy movement in our bodies. Yeah. Mm. So if you have the book, and this is one of our required readings for teacher training, How Yoga Works. How Yoga Works. This is a little controversial book, but the information in it is great. It explains how the energy, energy channels associate with the breath. Um, our classes emphasize the breath as the highway to keen awareness and also uses as a guide or barometer when exploring poses. So if your breath is choppy, you back off. If your breath is feeling good and fluid, you can intensify. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's Dantian breath. There's a little bit more with the breath than what the breath does for our bodies, but that's what we got. And these are my notes, so you can look at, I don't know if, I think they're, do, 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 do. there we go. My notes are very, um, you can see very colorful, and I made pictures, so uh, lines of the chakras and this, how the uh, circular pattern of Dantian, and we talk about the class setup. So there's three things. Uh, when you're getting started, you first want to discuss the breath as you're setting up your class or right away, like right away when you get started, you want to talk about the breath. Um, when you set up, you sit in a sit, stand, however you want in that first initial position and then talk about how the breath works, what is it, what it does for us, how we can use it with intensifying or modifying. So there's three things that the breath does for us in our yoga practice. It helps connect us to the present moment. So when you are thinking about your breath, you're connected to the here and now. You're not wandering elsewhere with your mind. Number two, um, explain the circular pattern, that circular breath and getting deep into the lower part of the lungs, into that Dantian. You don't have to use those words, but use whatever words or verbiage uh, works for you as a teacher or in your mind if you're a student just practicing on your own. And then explain how we use the breath in class, that modifying or intensifying. And you don't even have to use the word modify because sometimes that can be a little bit discouraging if you tell people you have to modify or you can't do something. Maybe it's a way to customize or just back off a bit until uh, if you're still building strength, that kind of stuff. So use language that's appropriate to your class, not saying if you can't do this, then you know drop your knees or if you can't breathe, so it's a little bit more, uh, it's a little softer than that. It's just a little bit nicer because you don't want to ever make someone feel like they can't do something because some days you just don't want to. Anyway, that's like a different soapbox. Um, yeah, and after that, we get started into Tai Chi warm-ups, which again is a little bit different than other yoga styles maybe you've seen and a little bit different than regular power or vinyasa yoga classes. So we start with the breath, talking about Dantian breath. And then we go into Tai Chi warm-ups, and I'll go through those probably tomorrow, day two. We'll go through some other things. Well, we'll go through something anyway. Today's topic was our breath and talking about Dantian, because it's a little bit different than what you might find in other yoga practices. So some of our, some and much of our yoga philosophy and training, instead of the regular philosophy, we do some of the Tibetan history and philosophy. And again, this book, How Yoga Works, which I can put a little link in the comment for you uh, to get this, is, is um, it's a book, it's a story of a girl based in Tibet. So uh, it's a little bit more towards that, that uh, style, which they're all similar anyway. Do what works for you, right? Right. Okay, thanks for watching. We've got one month until yoga teacher training. I should also probably post the link to, um, to yoga teacher training information if you're interested it's an, at alley cat yoga in wisconsin all right okay for any more information on me or um, some of my yoga stuff and yoga videos my website as always is ashesyoga.com i will see you next time